impact as the Kiwis come out onto the field. A lot of booing as the Kiwi names were called out a little while ago. Owen Wright, Howie Tamati, Kevin Tamati, Kurt Sorensen, Hugh McGann, and the reserves, Mark Lear and Ricky Cowan. Being led on by Captain Mark Graham. Looking at the two sides, Australia. This is perhaps the most in inexperienced Australian test side in a decade. Four of them are making their test debut. Mal Meninga and Wally Lewis, both of whom have played 11 tests, are the old hands. Both are 25 years old. It's a very big, fast and physical side. The centres, Close and Meninga, are both 16 stone. And doubtless the battle of the front rows will be a highlight with two giants in Roach and Dowling as the props. The pack's mobility relies on the second rowers, Wynn and Cleal, and the lock, Wayne Pierce. Four players making their test debut. John Rebo, the winger, brought in at the last moment to replace the injured Eric Groth. That may or may not cost them some advantage in this test. They are a bigger side than New Zealand. New Zealand, the Kiwis average 12 tests apiece. The only player making his debut is reserve back Mark Elia. They're slightly taller but much lighter than the Australians and will rely on pace and ball skills. Clayton Friend and Olsen Filipina will hold the key to the backline attacks with experienced support from a very mobile pack. The only question mark is over Owen Wright and how well he'll handle propping against a front row reckoned to be the world's best. So expect a pretty torrid forward battle, especially in the first 10 minutes. Very quickly indeed. The Glen Clark is in tremendous condition on I, Tony. I haven't seen the ground as firm, and we saw the curtain raises tonight, the ball bouncing particularly high, and I think Graham Lowe would be a little bit concerned because of the fact that this could be a fast game. And uh, as we've seen the Australians in training, they're big, they're bigger than New Zealand overall. If they're a little bit faster than the Kiwis, well, then New Zealand has a problem. He's got to close the game up. This is Graham Glow. He's got to get his big, hard men like Kevin Tarmody to get in hard and upset the Australians. So the opening 10 minutes, I think, is going to be the real pressure on each over the Kiwis. Say the Australians are very confident that they can pull this one off. They're a little bit upset that they read that Carlo Park hasn't been in too good condition, but I think it's in particularly good condition when I saw it last Sunday. So Australia are very, very anxious to win this first up one. And I think the opening quarter is vital. Malmeninga to start. Mark Graham very fired up for this match. The kickoff by Malmeninga. The test is underway. What they're calling World War Three. First drop, Clayton Friend. Kurt Sorensen. It'll be hard and fast up front for a start. Kevin Tomity. Howie Tomity. Kemble. John Rebo. The man brought in to replace Eric Groth, who was injured. Gary Jack. Hugh McGowan, the tackler. made a rule there by the referee, the French referee Julian Rescanaris, he really penalised the Kiwis then because I thought that they were, well I'd say about six metres back but he's gone about eight and penalised them. He's very strict on the five metre rule, Julian Rescanaris rated as the best of the French referees, still the policy of neutral referees in test matches. Australia in a good position here to do something. Wayne Pierce, well hit by Kevin Tomity. Mark Murray flicking it on out. Wally Lewis to Gary Jack. Jack almost through James Lulaway. Wally Lewis puts the bomb up. Test for Gary Kemble. Kemble safely under it, safe as houses, but loses the ball. Good ruling there, 
were well offside. They were all in advance then of the bomb kick and uh, a great well, attempt to take by Wally Lewis, but certainly a penalty New Zealand, and that's uh, a bit of a breather. Gary Campbell looked to be safe underneath it, but lost the ball in the tackle. The tackle by Noel Cleal, making his test debut, looking to make a big impression. Campbell for the line. Howie Tomatin. Kevin Tomatin. Kurt Sorensen. Kevin Tomatin trying to bustle his way through. They're tackling him three on one as they are Kurt Sorensen. First touch of the ball for Owen Wright, and he won't be happy with having dropped that. So the turnover, Australia once again on attack. And then you're flicking it out, Gary Jack in the line. Well tackled by Hume again. Mark Murray. It's been all uh, Australia really calling the tune there and uh, really going in particularly hard on New Zealand. There's three to one on their tackles and uh, they look a little bit more fired up than the Kiwis at the moment. Murray has it. There's the man they've got to watch tonight, John Ferguson. Steve Roach, another making his test debut. Darling. Peter Wynn. Wayne Pierce away. Trying to set something up. Good backup from Australia. First blood to the Green and Golds. Chris Close, the try scorer. I think it all started, Tony, if we uh, have a little shot back, but we can't at the moment. But the man lying on the ground is Olsen Filipano, as you see the winger turning it back nicely for the big powered centre close to go through the score. But Olsen Filipano was the man that flew and went hard, but he couldn't stop the attacking movement of the Australians and that left them in in the corner and uh, as I say they've looked a little bit more fired up than the Kiwis in this opening stanza and uh, well the New Zealanders have got to get that leather they've got to taste it they've got to work hard and at the moment it is Australia really calling the tune Chris Close the manly Warringah centre 26 years old six feet and just under 16 stone making his test debut one of four Malmeninga for the extra points Australia has two big centres, both of them around 16 stone, Mal Meninga and Chris Close. They'll take some containing tonight by James Littleway and Gary Pro. There's the kick from Mal Meninga. Flagged away. Australia lead, four points to nil. Seven minutes gone in the game watching Olsen Filipano, uh, Tony he doesn't seem to be too bad, uh, he went in very hard on that tackle but uh, it's Clayton Friend at the moment getting some injury uh, problems there, the Masur is on the field for the Kiwis as they line up to recommence play but uh, it was bad luck because Filipano went hard but it was a very good buck run by the Australian uh, I think it was the inside centre then and uh, it just allowed them to get in that far corner but the Kiwis have got to get the leather, they've got to taste the ball and they've got to start attacking New Zealand's only newcomer, Mark Ilya, the reserve back, may yet get to touch the leather today. As Owen Wright restarts. Well, it is. John 
Ferguson. Norman again. Graham Lowe looking worried. Jim Campbell, the team manager, alongside him. Well, I think New Zealand trying a little bit of a rough up there, but uh, it's not quite working at the moment. And I notice this referee is really uh, pulling back the Kiwis at least about eight to, to nine metres, which is a tremendous depth to stand back. And he's trying to make this game extremely open, which I don't think New Zealand wants at the moment. Darling. Peter Wynn. Australia certainly dominating at the moment. Looking at wide Australia. Close. Close and Meninga, the danger man, along with John Ferguson. Chip through. Kimball's got it. Still in play. Tough tackling from John Rebo and Mel Meninga. Dean Bell. <laughs> Kurt Sorensen. Really not making much headway at all, the Kiwis. Hume again with the kick. Gary Jack is back there. Gary Jack running it up like his predecessor, Greg Brentnell. He's a convert from Australian rules, so very good under the high ball. Wally Lewis with the chip. Kimball coming round. He may have hit his head on Chris Close's boot then Gary Campbell there's danger for New Zealand Ahara can't hold it and immediately Australia are right in position there and the Kiwis are slow to get back even in the opening 10 minutes a little bit of play off the ball there Kevin Tamady having a little bit of a ding dong with his opposite number Ferguson and again the tackle Well, it's all Australia at the moment. Chris Close again. In the 10th minute of the game, Australia, lo Australia leading by four points to nil. Meninga. Right out wide to Rebo. Meninga again. Salvaged by Olsen Filipina. Owen Wright. Well, that should have been a try to Australia there. Gary Jack in the back line. The pace really on. They turn it back in. And tremendous cover defence by New Zealand who just got there. And they're really being stretched. Australia quicker to the ball. Speed of passing is faster. And New Zealand really at the moment are struggling. Certainly does. They seem to be struggling to find a pattern. Being played out of the game at the moment. I think the blind side, Tony, is the most effective part of Australia's pattern. They're working the big centre and their forwards on the blind, and New Zealand have to watch it. All right. The Australian tackling has been superb so far. Kurt Sorensen. Look how many men they tie him up with. Howie Tamati waiting. There was a double tackle in on Kurt, so the first chance for New Zealand really to get in a scoring position inside the 22 with Campbell kicking. There's a light breeze here, and it does favour the Kiwis in this half. And uh, let's just have a look how they got back into this, well, how the effective uh, penalty was awarded against the Australians. But the referee must have said play it, and he couldn't get up to play the ball. So New Zealand now in a very good position. See what they're going to do. They've got a lot of planned moves. Little double round for Mark Graham. First real attacking opportunity for New Zealand. Clayton Friend. Kevin Tamati. Howie Tamati. 
Clayton Friend to Owen Wright. Owen Wright still trying to get that pass away. Not quite as easy as it is in club football at home. Kevin Tamati. Clayton Friend. Having a little dash himself. Tackled by Pierce. Olsen Filipano with the ball. Beautifully taken. Superb. It's a tremendous try to Hugh McGann, and I suppose most Aucklanders would realise how brilliant Hugh McGann is, and I would say a Graham Lowe delighted, but what a glorious bomb kick. And the man that flew over the top of them, if you watch it now, is if you look for number 13, is Hugh McGann, and he's one of the best take of high balls I've known. See him go so high in American style, and that's Australian rules at its best. A tremendous try, and the Kiwis really wanted that one badly. Now, the man he took it off there, number one, Gary Jack, is an ex-Australian rules player, as we said, like his predecessor, Greg Brentnell. Superb under the high ball, and just showing Hugh McGann's prowess in the air. He and Owen Wright there together, both of them very clever in the air. Hugh McGann recently renamed Abdul Karim for his ability at the basketball style of play. Filippano is very close in here and he's raised the flag so the Kiwis hit the leader right 6-4 and it's particularly effective I think that they could get inside the 22 and apart from uh, well, the little halfback Clayton Friend, who almost broke clear. It was a tremendous move by Filipina to decide to do the bomb kick. Effective indeed. So New Zealand lead. Six points to four. Twelve minutes gone. Kemble. Sorensen. We apologise for these audio problems from Lang Park, but Australia in attacking position here. It looks like another try for Australia. John Rebo to finish, but I think he's out. No, it's a try. A try has been awarded. He's been given the try. Superb running in the line from Gary Jack, the fullback, setting John Rebo up to finish. Beautifully done. So Australia now take the lead 8-6, to six, but if you look at the replay coming up, this Gary Jack is very, very fast, and he gets into the right position if you see it moving across now, he'll punch it hard. And that's him gone the burst, and he sure makes play for that wing Rebo. I thought the pass was a shade forward to me, but I'm not quite in the right position. But at least uh, it was a tremendous effort by Jack to really click into the back line as he did, and he's got tremendous pace. And uh, as I say, a question mark about the timing of that pass. Watch it. Lobbed it forward out the far wing Rebo. Pass looks slightly forward, but beautiful running in the line from Gary Jack and the veteran John Rebo, who will retire at the end of this year at the grand old age of 31. He brought into this test at the last moment. Mal Meninga for the extra points. One great for consolation, he's way out on the sideline, so it's got to be a big effort. And it's flagged away. So still six points to eight, just the two-point margin. And I'm sure Wally Lewis would have liked the extra two points. I think what's disappointing here is that New Zealand, once they get back inside their 22, they seem to find that the their cover defence is not quite so good. And this is a bit of a problem for the Kiwis. Australia looked as though they can score when they get close to New Zealand's line. Olsen Filipino will restart. Gary Jack. Campbell. Mark Murray, the tackler. Little while waiting. 
Dean Bell. The Australians have very quickly identified the danger man on the Kiwi side. All right. Hugh McGann. McGann trying to hold on to that ball. Almost taken from him by Wally Lewis. O'Hara. Graham, Mark Graham, taking some pulling down, Mark Graham, the fifth tackle, the bomb going up, Jack under it, but can't hold it, picked up by Howie Tamati, Dane O'Hara, O'Hara going back inside, Rome. Heavy tackle on Owen Wright. Bacon friend to Hugh McGann. McGann trying to bust the line. Just 12 metres short now. Kevin Tavity. Mark Graham. Just a couple of metres short of the line now. Mark Graham. New Zealand looking for a swift reply. Howie Tavity trying to get in there. Philippina. Gaps closing up. Kurt Sorensen. A big looping pass. Oh, nicely put back from James Lillaway. Has Dean Bell got it or not? Gary Prime. Just a couple of metres short. Still New Zealand. Clayton Friend with the ball. Too far? It is. New Zealand really had a great chance, great chance to score there. They had the... Uh touch of hand by the Australian on two occasions so it meant that the play of the ball must have gone up to about an 11 count and it was bad luck that the bomb kick was just too deep. I think Dez that New Zealand can take heart from the fact that they can get penetration when they put their minds to it. Yes they've certainly improved now a lot. Ball loose, and it's out. Went out off Dane O'Hara. Just watching when the Australians are starting to move in position. They're a little bit quicker than the Kiwis, and our forward pack are not quite matching man for man, so there could be some splits coming later in this game. The pressure has been really on. It's been a fast match. Gary Jack again. What a superb runner. Gary Jack is so quick off the mark. Picks up a pass beautifully. Malmeninga. Not held in that tackle. And busting through Kurt Sorensen coming past the other way. Malmeninga proving very hard to pull down. Steve Roach, another of the newcomers to the Australian side. Jack in the line again, the extra man. Chris Close gets the pass out to Ferguson. Ferguson can't hold it. Olsen Filipina. Mark Graham. New Zealand just outside their own 22, leading to make yardage. Kurt Sorensen. Good pass up. Dean Bell. He's the quick man on the wing, Dean Bell. John Rebo caught him. just a little standoffish on right Mark Ryan Australia in possession the turnaround Dowling Mark Ryan was out cold tackle looked a little illegal the referee didn't see it obviously Mark Graham I think is injured Chris Close coming in Kevin Tumley the tackler it started to get rugged out there Mark 
Graham's getting medical attention. He's flat on his back and he's just starting to sit up now. So New Zealand one man short at the moment. Malmeninga, Australia trying to make advantage. While New Zealand has 12 men. Lewis with the chip through. I think that's just going to go too far. Just rolling over the line. Gary Kimball waiting for it. Well, Mark Graham has just fallen to the ground again, Tony. He's very, very sick. That was a pretty hard double tackle there. One must have got him around the throat, I think, and thrown a short one because he just lay flat on his back. As the arm came out and certainly caught him head high, whether or not it was accidental is uh, open to some suggestion. Glenn Gallagher, the physio on the paddock, giving him some attention, but as Des just said, he tried to get up. This was the tackle on him. It's the one when they, he turned his back, and uh, that's the one that uh, number 11 must have got him right across the throat, I would say. No, no, Cleal, I think it was the hitman. So New Zealand's reserve forward is Ricky Cowan, and I think they're going to need him. Mark Graham doesn't really know where he is. Well, we've got Dr. Drake here, and uh, that's a blessing, I think. <laughs> but no, Graham is recuperating very quickly. My word, he's a tremendous footballer. We'll have to wait for a few minutes to see just how effective Mark Graham is going to be for them, but I suspect there will be some retaliation for that. Kevin Tommany. Olsen Filipina. Playing a very lively game tonight, Olsen Filipina. After recent fairly poor form, Kurt Sorensen. Standing as always in the tackle. Howie Tamati waiting. Kevin Tamati. Notice referee Julian Rescanyares is very close to the action. Good pass from Hugh McGann to Mark Graham. Clayton Friend. Clayton Friend. This is the form of Clayton Friend. Can he beat Gary Jack? Oh, good yardage made. The little man that the Australians really know nothing about. Mark Graham with the chip up. Not quite far enough. Ball loose, gathered by Australia. Ferguson. Well, if there are any gaps there, Clayton Friend will find them. Not after that tremendous break of Clayton Friend, we had them on the far side, but the bomb kick of Mark Graham. I don't think he's too sure where he is either, Tony. Harry Jack. Trying to take it on the run, he didn't knock it on, running it up. Dean Bell. Dean Bell against Rebo. Dean Bell for the line, back inside, tried to find Gary Prone. Olsen Filipina away now. Play on, says the referee, and Olsen Filipina will put it down onto the post. Well, what a tremendous try. Started by a mistake from Gary Kimball, and it was the easiest of tries I think Tony I've seen in the test game. So simple indeed, when you watch the replay, it's glorious to see. But Dean Bell was the man that did it. Here's the pass that starts Dean Bell off on this tremendous run. And the call was inside, he knew it too. So it was a simple try. As he has to drag it in this time, it's deflected by an Australian. They stop, put the brakes on, and they'll flick it out again beautifully to Olsen Filipana, who just has to jazz away with the easiest of runs, no one to beat. Well, super play and really tidied up so beautifully by Gary Prome. Stopping on a sixpence, taking a step back. Have a look at Dean Bell when he's away. Tried to put that pass inside. Gary Prome had his arm up, calling for it. Look how quickly he stopped and tidied up the play. Saw Olsen Filipina there. Filipina had no defence to beat. Julian Rascanares waves the play on and Filipina right under the posts. Really, the man that let him go was Mark Murray, the little halfback. He was the one that let him go. And, of course, New Zealand have scored under the goalpost, which makes Filipano's task as a goal kicker so simple. The key was he'll hit the front. 
Wow, this scoreline is unbelievable. Nobody, I'm sure, was predicting that 18 points would have been scored this early in the game. Nelson Filipina looking for inspiration. A vital kick, and it's there, and the extra points put New Zealand in the lead by four. There is no doubt whatever that Clayton Friend will be a known name after tonight's match. Virtually unknown in Australia before he came here. The only thing the Australians knew was that Graham Lowe spoke very highly of him. That's better, Tony. They're kicking too, which I wanted to see because they must hit this Gary Jack hard as a danger. Close. Close trying to go himself. Filipina, the tackler, with James Luluai. Going to try and run it out wide. Kiwi defence looking good. Mark Murray. Kevin Tommy, the tackler. With Dean Bell. Rebo. Leninga. Wally Lewis. Pierce can't hold it. Picks it up again. Steve Roach trying to get a pass up. Ops to take the tackle. Fifth tackle now. Wally Lewis with the chip through. And it's out right on the corner post. Well, Wally Lewis should know this ground, but she's home one and the crowd roar behind with everything Wally does today. And it was a lovely little place to kick to and a beautiful spot for them to uh, try and get a tight head here and put pressure on New Zealand. New Zealand have got to win the strike. Which they have done. Clayton Friend waiting for the ball. Try to fool the Australians into coming round offside. Kevin Tamati. Australian Ford's not quite so fiery now. The sting's gone out of them a little bit. Certainly in the early moments of the game, they were totally dominant. But since the Kiwis have discovered that they can break that line, they've really got a lot more confidence. Ferguson safe under the ball, but caught fairly quickly by Dane O'Hara. I would say he was offside, Tony. Certainly looked that way. Gary Jack flicking it back inside. Was he out or not? The flag marshal has the flag up. I think the New Zealand was lucky then, but I'm sure O'Hara was ahead of Hume again when he went for the line kick. And uh, let's have a look at his foot out. Yes, he's certainly out all right. Well, right underneath the front row, how he came at his feet, bad luck. It's, uh, it's worthwhile a shot then, I would think, to try and gain possession because it's a fairly big one uh, for Wally Lewis. Not a big one for Wally Lewis because he's going to go for the touch finder. And uh, that means to say they've got the tap now, so the Kiwis are going to have to work hard to smother them. How good is the Kiwi defence now? Tackling three on one. Men like Meninga, that's what they've got to do to wrap them up. Mark Murray, the double round with Wally Lewis. Wally Lewis trying to go through, gets the pass away. Gary Jack trying to fight close outside him. Pierce is there. Ferguson. Oh, tremendous defence here by New Zealand. They're flat tack now on the try line. Trying to bust through there, will be held up. Greg Kanescu it was, making it wide this time. Pierce steps back inside, links up with Lewis and Murray. Mark Murray, Steve Roach, and nicely finished by Noel Cleal. Well, it had to come, Tony. The 
that had to come. And there's the coach very delighted, and there's a very good move by Australia. They spun it wide, and they spun it back, and uh, no way could you hold out a team with that ability when the pace was really on. But look at it, it's shaping up there, and she's all on. Right out in front of the goalpost, and uh, they're trying to contain a few Australians and New Zealanders. Well, this has been growing, really, since the kickoff. The Hume again is the man that's down. Most uncharacteristic of Hume again to get involved in anything like that. I think Hume again is a little sore after that. All credit to the Australians for that try. I, it was on about three times. They tried to punch the line and they turned it back as clever as they did. The gaps were appearing in New Zealand's line and it had to come, I thought, and eventually it was a simple try. But when you think of the speed of passing that was going on, it was a very, very fine effort. It must have gone through about 11 hands before they finally scored the try as they move it right across the field and then back again. Well, dears, I think we're in for a high-scoring game. The extra points are there. 14 points to 12, Australia leading New Zealand. Looking again at how this try came, it went through so many hands, just sustained pressure from Australia. The Kiwi defence was good up to a point, but finally, Noel Cleal racing through at good speed to finish it for them virtually under the posts. And to the left of your picture there, you could just see where that little fracas started with Hugh McGann and a couple of the Australian forwards. Restart from Olsen Filipina. Six minutes remain in the match. Pierce. Should I say six minutes till half time in the match? Already 26 points scored. Wally Lewis. Gary Jack, Hume again the tackler. Dean Bell. Dean Bell still going. Tackle. Wally Lewis has the ball. Ferguson. An Eskew. Australian second and third phase play is very quick here, Tony. They've got New Zealand a little bit rattled now. And wanting to take advantage while they feel there is a weakness there in the defence. Rebo along the wing. Bundled out. Meninga. Wonder if that one's gone too far. Kimball safe under it and running it back into play. Right under his post though. New Zealand needing to run themselves out of trouble now. Five minutes remain in the first half. yardage figures that the statisticians will tell us after half time will be interesting reading as to who has made the most yardage inside their six tackles Rebo going back for it 
Gary Prime there to tackle. Gary Jack. Australia determined to run it up now. Chris Close, the big centre. Ryan the tackle. Waiting for it to bounce. Kineski has got a very high tackle count so far. Dean Bell. Tomley to Kurt Sorensen. And out to Hugh McGann, who can't hold it. Went forward. Very impressed with this French referee. I think he's doing a particularly good job. And when he they go for the deep kicks here, he rule that you're offside and point to you and uh, allows the fullback or whoever it might be to run the five meters. He's particularly fair in his rulings. Australia ball. Ferguson. Put some more passes together now, the Australians. Owen Wright comes up with the ball for the Kiwis. Howie Tamati. Gert Sorensen. Double round with Clayton Friend. Not making the yardage, though. Clayton Friend having a little tussle with his opposite number, Mark Murray. Here's Gary Prone. Graham looking it wide to Olsen Filipina, still looking. Had Dane O'Hara outside and Dane O'Hara shaking his head as to why the pass didn't come. Once again, he's penalised for that extra double tackle. And uh, if you watch it this time, as Filipina tries to get to his feet and he gets caught again from behind. And I'm not quite sure of the particular ruling whether he's allowed not to get to his feet. I think it's uh, a little bit surprising here that they got the penalty and they're going to have the shot at goal. But I, New Zealand's back line is, has been a little bit disappointing, I think, in this game, which is near half-time now. Uh, we haven't seen very little of Gary Prem at all, nor James Ludewey, nor the ability to run off anyone at all. The Australian back line have moved sweetly, have spun it wide, they've used their wings, Rebo and Ferguson, they've turned it back in, and New Zealand really have had, wor had to work overtime, I think, to contain the Australians for three tries to two. So. Uh, it's been a pretty good effort by the Kiwis, but the Australians could be very damaging in the third quarter. But Filipano, well, he's a long way out. I'm not quite sure, Tony, if he can reach this distance either. This is one of his bigger effort kicks that I've seen him take for a long time. Certainly the pressure is on him tonight. This to equal the scores. Olsen Filipino from East in Sydney, where he now plays, formerly from Mangari. 28-year-old. Veteran of 18 tests. This is 19. Already the crowd starting to boo. What a tremendous kick. Well, it looked as though it was going to drop short. Olsen Filipina has just equaled the scores. That's his biggest kick I've seen Olsen do for many years. And it's half time, Tony. Well, there you are. A 14 all. Who would have predicted that? And I think it's quite outstanding, New Zealand, to hold this great Australian team. I think the encouraging thing is, is that each time Australia has run at that line and broken it and scored a try, New Zealand has replied so swiftly. They certainly have had the confidence to come back and to have a go at breaking the line. And so we will be back with the second half shortly. The news from Lang Park in Brisbane is that at half time, Australia 14, New Zealand 14, and what an exciting, tense encounter. Clayton Friend. Having a little dash himself. Tackled by Pierce. Olsen Filipano with the ball. Beautifully taken. Superb. It's a tremendous try to Hume again, and I suppose most Aucklanders would realise how brilliant Hume again is, and I would say a Graham Lowe delighted, but what a glorious bomb kick. And 
but the man that flew over the top of them, if you watch it now, is if you look for number 13, is Hume again, and he's one of the best take of high balls I've known. See him go so high in American style, and that's Australian rules at its best. A tremendous try, and the Kiwis really wanted that one badly. Now, the man he took it off there, number one, Gary Jack, is an ex-Australian rules player, as we said, like his predecessor, Greg Brentnell, superb under the high ball, and just showing Hugh McGann's prowess in the air. At the time in possession, and uh, as you can see from the figures, very little difference. And the figures you're seeing up there at the moment are the yardages gained by the respective teams inside six tackles on average. So not a great deal in it in terms of possession, time in possession or yardage made. Although it may look as though Australia have made better use of the ball, there's very little in it on average. More importantly this time, New Zealand kick off and so Australia will be pinned inside their 22 unless they kick quickly. No replacements on the paddock after half time. Mark Graham will continue. I would expect Graham Lowe to use perhaps Mark Elia and perhaps Ricky Cowan in the, the fourth quarter. I think this is the vital time now for New Zealand. Harry Campbell waiting for it. Gary Jack, a bit of a kicking duel between the fullbacks. Not much they can do here now because they're well run, both sets are. It's a question of who's got the power, and Campbell's got no power at all. Ferguson, he's going to have a run. Kevin Tomady, a little slow to catch him. Mal Meninga. Jack. Dean Bell has him for it's Great stuff, Tony. New Zealand are right inside their 22, and Australia are going to come all the way back. Almeninga. Owen Wright and Hume again combining to tackle. Kaneski. Kick through. Gary Prime staying in play. Back to Kimball. Kimball trying to get through. Trying to run it wide, Olsen Philippine has found a gap. Has he got the support? Tackled and losing it forward. That's one of the better runs of New Zealand there, but uh, he had support outside. The cover was coming across too, but I thought he went that extra meterage. Those are the tackle counts on your screen now. I think they might have missed a couple of Hume McGann's. A penalty are given to, us, to New Zealand. The ball tossed right underneath the front row's feet. So here's a chance now for New Zealand to get very close to the corner flag. Ricky Cowan warming up to come on. Graham Lowe there just talking to him on the sideline. Not sure who's going to be replaced. Perhaps Mark Graham. A bad play by New Zealand. They had a chance to force a scrum and get right on top of Australia, and the Campbell couldn't find touch. And so Australia will play it and play it clear. Jack. Campbell under the ball. And running it up. Kiwis inside Australia's half now. Ricky Cowan ready to come on. We'll see shortly who he's going to replace. Kevin Tomasey. Dean Bell. Dean Bell in a gap. Trying to run around Gary Jack and he's there. Oh, Dean Bell clear to the line. Superb play. Well, that's one of the trick moves, I think, Tony, because he stood in close to the ruck and it's easy to beat them. And when you see the replay as Mark, not Mark Graham, it's uh, Kurt Sorensen that's receiving medical attention at the moment. But you watch where... Dean Bell is, he's standing close to Hume again and he catches them loose in the ruck there and they haven't got the speed to forward but he left Gary Jack for dead and uh, Gary Jack is a fairly quick mover as you know and that just shows you what acceleration Bell has and I would say uh, Tony this is a move by Graham Lowe to bring in his fast winger in close to the forward pack. 
Well, there are fast men in both sides, but none quicker than Dean Bell. Gary Jack coming across there, couldn't catch him. What superb, determined running from Dean Bell. Mark Graham is off the field. Ricky Cowan is the replacement. And my goodness, hasn't Dean Bell matured since he came to Sydney? Oh, he's very quick now. He's a better player than what he was in Auckland. And I can't believe that New Zealand have scored all their tries almost along or in front of the goalpost. It's quite incredible. And that means, of course, they're getting maximum points for each try. Instead of the Australians wide out, and Mark Graham very, very sick. I'm surprised he actually came back on, uh, Tony, because he didn't, uh, he didn't look too well early in the piece. And he's rarely lasted a test for the Kiwis either. But yet, when he's left also, we've often won. Olsen Filipina, again a vital kick to give them that margin. This is a tremendous move for New Zealand because to hit the front by six in that opening five minutes of the third quarter, what a morale booster. And Australia have got their work cut out. Well, we thought the third quarter would be the vital one. New Zealand have struck first. In the second half, 20 points to 14. So a converted try needed by Australia now to equalise. And we'll see the form of Ricky Cowan very shortly, the replacement forward for New Zealand. Dean Bell. Dean Bell still going. Eventually caught by Mel Meninga. Ball going loose in the tackle. Cowan's first touch. I think that's Dean Bell injured in the middle of the field. It's Dean Bell. He's not getting up either at the moment. So Bell has been subject to treatment as well. And breaking from the scrum, Hugh McGann doesn't look too well either. So there's two New Zealanders down now. Bell's got up. But Hugh McGann has gone to the ground. This is tough on New Zealand. Seems to be his arm that Hugh McGann has injured. Meanwhile, Dean Bell in the middle of the paddock, getting some attention from Greg Glenn Gallier, the New Zealand physio. And Hugh McGann does not look well. We've only got one replacement left, that's all. And uh, the tremendous effort by Bell to score that try I would imagine that he would be subject to the treatment when he ran across and wide and dangerously flat across the field there uh, well when you see a player of his ability you'd get into him there's a double tackle on him and uh, he's felt it but he's moved into the centers by the way and Gary Prem who's had this bandage around his right leg has been playing out on the wing for a while Dean Bell seems to be okay he was concussed in a match in Sydney just a couple of weeks ago and rested the following week Ferguson John Ferguson very, very nearly away. Dana O'Hara caught him. Australia now rampant. This will test the Kiwi defence. Chris Close. They're just 17 metres out now. Right up on attack, Pierce. Picking the ball wide, Wally Lewis. That's a surprise, there's only one player outside Wally Lewis. Australia too under a bit of pressure now, even on attack. Good wrap-up tackle from Owen Wright there on Wally Lewis. Steve Roach. And Hugh McGann ends up with the ball, what's the ruling? Well, offside New Zealand will be a penalty Australia. Just one of those unfortunate happenings there. The ball bounced in the air and New Zealand ruled offside. If you watch it here, there's a punch by a New Zealand player that punched the ball clear and it was touched by a New Zealand about two metres ahead. Bad, well just bad luck and an easy chance for a shot at goal. Australia appear to have an injury to Wayne Pearce receiving some attention. This certainly has been a rugged encounter. Mal Meninga. This to close the gap by two. 20 points to 14, New Zealand leading. A very straightforward and vital kick for Malmaninga missed. Well, 
Well, that's a little bit of a pressure kick for Meninga too. They're in close, he could throw it over, and uh, these good kickers don't like it. So he's kicked well from the sideline once, and now he's missed the easier one. A restart from Ricky Cowan. Gary Jack. Olsen Filipina finding some form. Good tackle on Wayne Pierce. Canescu. Olsen Filipina has had a great game. Defence tightening up. Terry Fernley, the Australian coach, with the glasses. Nobody quite sure where the ball was then. Lewis, little chip over the top. Kemble. Ten minutes gone, second half. New Zealand leading 20 to 14. Ricky Cowan. Olsen Philippine up. Kevin Tomasey. Clayton Friend returning the tactics of Wally Lewis a couple of minutes ago. Lewis there. Murray flicks it on. Rebo back inside to Jack. Going wide. How good's the defense now? Ferguson. Ferguson away. Fastest tackles Kevin Tumbley's ever done on a flyer. Super defence from Kevin Tumbley. KT as he's known for the team. And he gave away a penalty. So another chance for Meninga. Not quite sure the ruling there by the referee because uh, it was a fair tackle he'd taken him by the back of the jersey. It was a, sl a slight aid by the own right coming in as well. But away they go the, of the slam. Darling. Cleo. Ferguson. And don't the crowd here love it when Ferguson gets the ball? Well, I thought Ferguson had just about scored. Certainly only inches short. Right up on attack now. Murray. Running out of tackles, Australia. Wally Lewis. Close. Chris Close. Looking as though he was going to score the try. Goes back New Zealand's way. Play advantage, says the referee. What fantastic cover defence, New Zealand. Kevin Tomady. Dean Bell. Kevin Tomady again. Tomady showing a, a burst of speed. Dean Bell. Dane O'Hara. All right. Make the friend. Ricky Cow. Matt Sorensen. Still able to get the pass back. Kimball with the kick. Knocked back. Mark Murray's away. And superbly caught by Dean Bell. Try saving tackle. 
Yes, they had to concede a penalty, New Zealand. Would have to there. They had to hold him tight. They were gone. It would have been an easy try. And what bad luck, New Zealand, then, when Campbell went for that quick clearance that it skied off in New Zealand. And there it is. You watch it now. And bang, it hits an Australian and shoots straight back to where the halfback Marks is waiting for it. And he caught New Zealand on the wrong foot, and Filipano could not get to him. But Bell had to work overtime to dive from behind, and then he stayed with him. And that's all he could do was just keep holding him there and concede a penalty. So the Australians have kicked back to give them more room now to attack from that far side. short now Australia Steve Roach will score the try well what can you say it had to come it's now the kick that counts I suppose and they really had New Zealand under a great deal of pressure and they deserved it that try I would say the big man he hasn't played too well to me. He's got a bit sluggish in the latter stages of the first half, but he's clicked this time. And their forwards are getting quite strong and damaging in a vital part of the game. Steve Roach making his test debut. That isn't he pleased to have scored a try. A man from Belmain just showing his strength there. He's 23 years old, but 6 feet 1 and 16 stone. What? Well, it's going to be a pretty hard last quarter, Tony. I don't know which way it's going to go because both sides can move the ball now and both forward packs are a little bit sluggish at times. They're not quite regrouping. And it's a question, I think, of possession. Less mistakes now as both sides seem to be fairly well matched. And this Des, another vital kick for Melvin Inga. Well within his kicking range, but under pressure tonight, he hasn't really come up with a good so far. Uh, he'd be very toey now. He wouldn't be happy at all. He's um, hoping, I would say, and praying out there that he's going to strike it right. And he's only walked walk back about three paces. He'll move in two and bang. This to equal the score. And it couldn't be straighter. Once again, the score's level. 18 with the try. 20 points with the conversion. 20 points all. Well, I don't think you could wish for a better test at Brisbane. And I know the Brisbane crowd are absolutely beside themselves, and I would imagine New Zealanders are very much wide awake at the moment in this great game. It's one of the hardest games I've seen for a long, long time, and with Australia dominant, then New Zealand getting back into it. And I wonder, Des, if Mark Elia is likely to come on for New Zealand. Yes, I'll be watching uh, Gary Prone very closely. He doesn't look too comfortable out on the wing. Campbell. Gary Prime. Mark Elia is warming up on the sideline for the Kiwis. Not sure yet who's going to come off. Prime is very sluggish there. He's just walking back now. He hasn't even got back five metres. I think it's going to come to who runs out of puck the quickest. Kevin Tomedy. Fifth tackle. Clayton Friend with the chip through. What a good tackle. Clayton Friend at 5 feet 6 and 10 stone 7. Tackling Chris Close who's 16 stone. But he hit him a bit high, said the referee, and it's penalty Australia. I'm watching Chrome, he's not free in his movement at all, Axine. He has been not very keen to get into the game. Well, obviously, he's got this leg injury. I think it won't be long before Mark Elia is on in his test debut. And may just give them life in the back line and that extra turn of speed that they need but Australia on attack now Ali Tamadi 
a marvellous tackle by Hume again that forced the ball out then. Luai. Kurt Sorensen. Did he knock it on? He did. Mark Elier is coming on. Gary Prome is going off. So the new player, Mark Elia from the Teatatu Club in Auckland, 22 years old, 6 feet and 14 stone, and probably the quickest man on the field. Clayton Friend. Gary Kemball. Elias first touch of the ball. Be interesting to see Des if Mark Elia does make that extra difference in the back line with his incredible turn of speed over the first five meters or so. Ooh, New Zealand almost caught here. They're all going backwards, and uh, that's bad playing New Zealand. And they've lost possession as a result. Ferguson with the ball. Meninga. Some of the resolve just going out of the Kiwi defence a little. 20 minutes remain in the match. We're in the fourth quarter now. Mark Murray tackled a little high. Got to be a penalty, Australia here. Kurt Sorensen has flattened him. And he'll get called out for it. He's thrown the loose arm. And they're calling him for to go off. But uh, he really caught this player. And I can't quite see who it is, Tony. But he's out cold. And I'm not sure whether he's going to get Sinbin or not. But New Zealand were very, very sluggish in that set play. The ball was going slowly along that back line. And uh, my word, it, uh, it looked terribly dangerous. They almost conceded a try. He's now called out both Dean Bell and Hume again, and he's giving them a bit of a lecture as well. They must have questioned his ruling, but it was a fair one. If you see the replay, you watch how this tackle is. Just about on the throat. Kurt Sorensen was the tackler. Why he's speaking to Dean Bell and uh, Hume again, as you say, dears, must be because uh, they answered back. Murray is up and okay. Had a chance now for Australia to go ahead through Malmeninga. There's his record of the day. This well within his range and virtually straight in front. He can kick him anywhere from halfway on his day, Malmeninga. The six foot 16 stone policeman from Queensland. Still be under pressure in this one too. It's quite simple, quite easy, but still he realises that it puts Australia in front for the first time in the second half. Flagged away again. Not a good day for Mel Meninga. So he's not a pressure kicker. So this keeps New Zealand in the game. The score's still tied, 20 all. In the fourth quarter of the game now, Ricky Cowan restarts. Rebo. Just inside the Kiwis half. Mark Murray not quite as lively as he was. Tamati. Kevin Tamati. Very good game, Kevin, today. He's had to work overtime because he's the only recognised prop forward we've got there, and I think he's carried a tremendous workload for the Kiwis today. Kurt Sorensen losing it forward. Marmoninka comes up with the ball. 
And Australia away on attack again. Rebo. Hume again, the tackler again. Meninga. Through Lewis. Murray. Olsen Filipina intercepting. Getting the pass up beautifully to Dane O'Hara. And they're lined out New Zealand for this one. Sorensen. Opting not to spin at that time. Clayton Friend looking at the line. Kevin Tommany. Howie Tommany running up alongside him. Almost to the 22, Australia Territory now. Clayton Friend trying to go in underneath. Had a reasonably quiet but safe game, Clayton Friend. The bomb goes up. Good tackle, Mark Elia. I heard Australia slow to get back now too. This has been a hard one for them. Still walking back behind the play the ball. Hugh McGann getting through an enormous load of tackles. Terry Fernley starting to get animated. Jack. Back looking at Australian play at the moment, their set formation is not good at all. Some of the forwards starting to look a little tired. Gary Kendall chasing that. Close to the line, bringing it back up. And dying before the tackle. Gary Kimball doesn't look on top form either. He's been safe, but hardly exciting. Ilya, Tamazi, through friend. Little way flicks it out to Filipina. Yes, I think Olsen Filipina has been the most effective back on the field. Well, he's had a tremendous game, but I'm just saying how Australians were getting tired. And look at Kevin Tarnley, he's just arrived back now from the play of the ball. So this has been a torrid game. Ed Sorensen. The stakes starting to creep into the Kiwis game. Owen Wright puts the kick through. Jack going back for it. Gary Jack running it up. Clayton Friend in everything. Yes, you can look at Australia. Both sides are tired now. It's a question of possession. That's all and a mistake here would uh, win or lose the test here. Either side can win this one now if they can gain possession. The bounce of the ball, as they say. Pierce. Murray can't hold it. Picks it up again. Kick right down Gary Kimball's throat. Ilya going back. And the ball is up. Just five metres short of the line. That's good work by Australia. They're kicking more than I've seen them do in a test match, and they want to play the game in New Zealand's 22. They realise that they can win it at this point. Ilya trying to keep it in, but he was already out, and the ball was out. A vital scrum now for the Kiwis. Leighton Friend to feed. Tight heads, one apiece. Wally Lewis marshalling his troops. Australia have the greater weight as far as the scrum is concerned. New Zealand haven't got quite the heavier pack. So the referee has dragged them 10 metres away now from that sideline. This is a very vital scrum and Clayton Friend can't throw it underneath his hooker's feet. However, the line umpire has come on as well to have a bit of a talk. And it's New Zealand with a loose head, he's just pointing. They have it. 
Now a bit of a let off for the Kiwis. Hugh McGann. Bad pass for Amelia. wasn't good by New Zealand to concede from the play of the ball but they've got the loose head Australia knocked it on despite the greater weight of the Australian scrum Howie Tamani seems to be holding his own so the both hookers have been called out now the lecture is on they've been fighting for getting their feet across and they're get, getting sent off for five minutes by the referee so they're down to 12 men. This is exciting. We've got Kim, Kevin Tamari. He's a very good hooker for New Zealand. I don't know how good the Australian one is. Australian possession. Can they make something of it now? Gary Jack. I think Peter Tunks is warming up to come on for Australia as a replacement. Ten metres short now, Australia. Cleo. The pace of the game really starting to show on both sides now. Wally Lewis flicking it back. Rebo has one try already. Missed. Yes, that's the try. That's the try that could win the test for Australia. Well, what a game John Rebo has had. Called in as a late-minute replacement for Eric Quote, the big winger. John Rebo has said that he will retire at the end of this year. And what a nice way to come back into test football. Two tries. Real damage there was done by that long first wide pass. And Dean Bell just could not... Well, he had Rebo. He could have, but he didn't tackle him hard and correct enough. But if you watch this long pass... It comes from Wally Lewis now. That's the one that did the damage because it cut out half of New Zealand's defence and was left in for Dean Bell to hit him. And he tried but failed. Excellent try to John Rebo. The 30-year-old from the Redcliffe Club in Queensland in his seventh test today. 24-20. Five tries, Australia to New Zealand's three, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty sort of what I would say, a, a decisive lead now that they've got, especially when they were getting tired and both hookers are off the ground. And interesting that John Rebo has been brought in to convert his own try in light of Mal Meninga's poor record tonight. So they're going to try another kicker right from the sideline. The odds really of a try scorer converting his own try from well out are very, very high indeed. In fact, I don't give him any chance of making it because he's had to work so hard to score that try and usually they're breathing pretty deeply and they're unbalanced. But it was bad luck New Zealand just couldn't get that strike. I thought Tamdi was a very good hooker and that's where it all came from and both hookers went off. That was the try that may have won this test for Australia because they're tired now and uh, they're not really regrouping like they used to behind the play of the balls. That's not a bad kick from John Rebo, and both flags are up. Well, what I'll say, I can't say much, Tony. A fantastic effort by Rebo, and really done by anyone who can score a try in the corner. So he's the in man tonight. And don't the Brisbaneites love him? Local boy makes good. John Rebo, what a test he's had. Filipina to restart. Running out of time now, New Zealand. Seven minutes remain in the match. And that's the biggest lead Australia has had in this test. Kiwi's a little slow to get back. Kane O'Hara. Ricky Cowan.
Kevin Tomini. Still trying to punch the gaps up the middle. Uruguay. Dummies and then takes the tackle. Had Bell outside him. Sorensen. Peter Tunks is on. Can't see yet who's off. Or Australia. Scrum to go down. 27 metres outside the Australian line. Australia with the feet. Both back lines are very, very flat now. New Zealand are on attack, but it's a question of who is the better striker, I think, and they're having a decision, Australia, to who hooks. They can friend round very quickly on Mark Murray. Ferguson. Slippery to tackle. Both Owen Wright and Hugh McGann have very high tackle counts. Less than five minutes remain other than injury time. Somebody's hit him pretty hard. He hasn't moved the prop forward. And he's certainly got the treatment from somebody of one of the New Zealanders. I don't know who it is, but Greg Dowling is lying straight on the ground. Just a pity that New Zealand cannot quite strike the ball at the moment because, as I say, it's really possession that's uh, winning the game for Australia now. And uh, they're tired, like New Zealand. When you're down to 12 men and you've had a torrid affair like this with only a, about five or six minutes left from the game, the side with the ball can move it, move it sweetly and do what they like. And they've got a tackle count of up to five. And this is what Australia has gained possession and so they've managed to score one. And now, of course, they've won another scrum again, and still New Zealand can't get the ball to try and square this game. It's Noel Cleal who has gone off to be replaced by Peter Tucks. Dane O'Hara. as ever eventually caught ship through from Hugh McGann and chasing it up well but Mel Meninga has possession Darling Ferguson Dean Bell the tackler of both was on just to way to the left of the posts man of the match has been named he is John Rebo the Australian winger and deservedly so just three minutes in the game now not quite sure how much is added on for injury time but three minutes of normal time remain in the game Australia leading 26 to 20 converted try the difference rough chance here we can kick deep if correctly there's a kiwi lying on the ground but it's pretty badly hurt one of the new zealand forwards i think 
And but we've got a penalty out of it, so it's our second rower. It's Kurt Sorensen. Yeah. Prostrate on the ground. Kiwi man of the match is Olsen Filipina. It's bad kicking by New Zealand. That's twice now they've failed to find touch on a penalty and they've conceded once again. There's a shape up too between Kevin Tarmody and Greg Dowling. And Olsen Filipina regains possession for the Kiwis. There's a great punch up on the far side. There's lefts and rights going as the play of the ball is carried on in the middle of the paddock. And on the far side, there are three Kiwis and somebody is, Tamati is still throwing them. Punch up started between Kevin Tamati and Greg Dowling. I noticed there that Steve Roach wasn't averse to throwing a couple in while Kevin Tamati was being held. Ricky Cowan trying to break it up was really on then but still down on the ground is Kurt Sorensen he's not happy at all and hasn't had a good game tonight for New Zealand but my word they were throwing plenty on that far side and I think Tamati is sitting there squatting down a bit he must have put in some very solid ones in there so the referee has decided to give them five minutes in the sim bin or is it ten I think he's pointing to is it two players A bit of confusion here with this French referee, Tony. He's indicating somebody's got to go off, I think, for 10 minutes. And it's going to be Kevin Tony who's been hauled out. Kevin Tomley being sent to the sin bin. Can't quite see uh, who's being sent for Australia. It was 10 minutes that he signalled. And less than 10 minutes in the game, obviously. It's both props yes. are gone. Kevin Tomley and Greg Dowling both in the sin bin. He's got a little bit of flair around the nose. One imagines they'll be able to sort things out. Kevin Tomity hasn't lost his sense of humour. Or has he? She's on again. Well, it was always going to be on between these two. But this, oh, this is not good. They should stop this in a hurry. Hume again going over to uh, try and break it up. Very good at all, actually. Watching the cameras have switched right off it because it's um, over behind the fence now, over in that far terrace side. And uh, this isn't very good for the game. Well, it was always going to be on between those two props, Kevin Tomity and Greg Dowling, both of them unofficially listed as the enforcers for their side. So we're down to a few players now. 11 or 12 players aside now. Oh, and got a rough chance too because there's another shape up here between McLeod and Friend. They won't let him have the ball. And New Zealand can kick if they can kick correctly and get right inside uh, the Australian 22. They've got a, a fairly, well, an outside chance, but they're going for the tap instead. True, and they do. Lewis waits for it. Up they go. It's loose on the ground. New Zealand have it. Ball is tackled. 20 seconds left. Can they come back, New Zealand? Across field to Olsen Filipina. Out wide to Sorensen. Sorensen's got Campbell with him. It goes over the head of Cowan. Picked up by Tamati. A pass. A speculator. Mark Elia has it. Fires it back over the... ...in up they go. Is tackled. 20 seconds left. 52 seconds left in the game. The police coming in to try and restore order as the crowd spills down from both the grandstand and from the hill area. There's less than a minute left. What a sensational end. I see at the end of this game uh, a flare up like that, a nasty incident after the event. Now they've got their way through. Into the sin bin. As New Zealand get a penalty and it's going to be on again. Well, the ground clock is still going. Now the referee again trying to signal timeout and it stops at 36 seconds. So the Australians might say, we'll keep fighting and use up time. The referee certainly got problems with the communications out there. 
They've got a kick through and they do. Lewis waits for it. Up they go. It's loose on the ground. New Zealand have it. Is tackled. 20 seconds left. Can they come back, New Zealand? Across field to Olsen Filipina. Out wide to Sorensen. Sorensen's got Kemble with him. It goes over the head of Cowan. Picked up by Tamity. A pass. A speculator. Mark Elia has it. Fires it back over the top. Through the guard. It's loose on the ground. Clayton Friend gives it to Dean Bell. Bell puts it into the air. The kids come onto the ground. Up goes Gary Jack. It's loose. It's gone. It's all over in Australia have won by 26 to 20. An unbelievable end. Well, what a finish. What a start it will be at Carlaw Park. <laughs> Who'd want to be in the front row for the first scrum at Carlaw Park for the second test? There's certainly going to be some, some uh, build-up towards there it is for Australia. Two tries to Rebo, tries to close. Cleland Roach, Meninga two out of six, Rebo one out of one. For New Zealand, tries by McGann, Filipina and Bell. Filipina four out of four. Penalties, Australia 8-7. And the scrums, 6-3 to Australia. The tight heads in the match went to Australia by two to one. As the Australians make their way back into the dressing room at the end of a tremendous and very fiery